I am going to leave you speechless right now. Because if you go on Google and you type in the speed of light, you get this number. So watch what happens when you put this number on Google Earth. Before you say, that's just a coincidence, did you know that the Great Pyramid is almost perfectly aligned to what is called True North? Even more so than the attempt that modern day scientists made when they built the Paris Observatory. But what makes this even more shocking is when you remember that this ancient group of people who built the Great Pyramid had no compass. Still think it's a coincidence? Well did you know that the Great Pyramid sides are on the exact line of the equator? And the three pyramids of Giza are perfectly aligned to match the belt of Orion. When you look at all the facts, it doesn't take a genius to understand that whoever built the most accurately aligned structure on Earth was not a simple people group using primitive methods, but incredibly intelligent workers sustained by some hidden insight. Let's look at the four possible candidates. Okay, number one. Elon Musk's speculation. Because of the precise location of the Great Pyramids, because we don't know when they were created, who made them, why they were created, and how the people made them, well, the only possible conclusion is that humans did not make this very complex structure thousands of years ago, but something else must have designed the Great Pyramid. So, a little while ago, Elon Musk tweeted this, and although it would appear that he's being sarcastic, many people took him very seriously, and they also believe that these same beings are the same creatures that created Stonehenge and the figures at Easter Island. Others claim, no, 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 it must have been a Goliath-like creature. You see, in 1996, a Japanese construction company carried out a test to see how many men it would require to move one of the pyramid's two and a half ton building blocks. The answer was 18 men. So the argument goes like this, if some of the largest building companies today would struggle to recreate the pyramids, why are we expected to believe that it was done by mere humans using simple hand tools? But if we add one of these large, oversized creatures to the mix, well then it would make the pyramids a lot more easier to build. So, I'm curious, do you think that this is a credible suggestion for the building of the Great Pyramid? Well, I know that some of you are going to be very shocked when I tell you my suggestion in a moment's time. Number two, the ancient Egyptians. It's no secret that the ancient Egyptian writings say very little about the pyramids. Some would argue that they say nothing at all about who built the pyramids, and yet this is still the mainstream view that yes, the ancient Egyptians are the ones who built these amazing structures because they are based in their land. The Greek historian Eroditus, when informed by Egyptian priests, he made an estimation that it took 400,000 men to build the pyramids and they were working in three month shifts and then they would have a new workforce who would swap with them to have a fresh pair of legs, if you like, to recommence the work. If this is true, and I'm going to come back to this in a moment's time, I think we have severely underestimated the mastermind of the Egyptian people. The Great Pyramid was made up of 2.2 million stone blocks. It's 13 acres wide, it weighs 6 million tons, and it stands at 481 feet high, making it the world's tallest building for thousands of years until the Eiffel Tower was built in the 1800s. One theory is that because the Egyptians were head and shoulders above the rest of the world, they knew how to build sledges rollers, pulley systems to build the pyramids. In fact, it's believed that they even transformed the landscape, digging out canals that flowed from the Nile and that there were workmen who carried the materials on boats to the pyramid building sites. In fact, heaps of water has been found beneath the pyramids at Giza, which supports this theory. But there is another controversial theory of why there's water beneath the pyramids, which we're going to visit very soon. But first, 
I'm not sure whether to tell you this or not, but the reason why people doubt that the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids is because the claim was that the pyramids were tombs. This was a place where the kings would go to be sort of mummified. They'd be put there to prepare their spirits for the afterlife. And yet, after the many excavations that have taken place, after the many discoveries, after all the wall arts, all the artifacts, there has still been no evidence, not one single body that has ever been found in any of the pyramids. Bodies have been found next to the archaeological sites, but there's never been one found inside the pyramids. Now, you've got to admit to me that this is getting very exciting. Do you think that the ancient Egyptians are the ones to build the pyramids? Well, I'm going to tell you my answer very shortly, but first, allow me to introduce you to our third candidate, an ancient lost civilization. Okay, okay, I know this theory sounds a little far-fetched, but this is actually gaining a lot of momentum, especially thanks to the likes of Joe Rogan and Graham Hancock. The specific example I give is above the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid are five further chambers. And these chambers are roofed and floored with granite beams that weigh about 70 tons each. And there are hundreds of them. And these 70 ton granite beams, which to put in context, a 70 ton beam is equivalent in weight to 35 large SUVs. These 70 ton granite beams have been elevated to a height of more than 350 feet above the ground and carefully and precisely uh, placed in position. It is very hard for archaeologists to explain how that was done using purely leverage and mechanical advantage. That's yeah. really old. <laughs> it's incredibly it's old, like, yeah. To, yeah. To think that someone back then could do something that would perplex us today yeah. with modern machinery. This is not a simple, and I've seen some of the conventional explanations of the construction of the pyramid, and they conveniently neglect those chambers above the king's chamber. They do. They conveniently neglect a lot of those massive stones. Yeah. You already know that even the most advanced technology couldn't replicate the pyramids. You already know that the structure and location is even more precise than our finest modern day buildings. You already know that the pyramids are perhaps the most perplexing things on earth. And so when we look at all of the dimensions, at all of the alignments, we cannot simply simply say that this is just a pure coincidence. That's why when we add all of this together, it's not completely balmy to believe that we're dealing with some kind of lost civilization who are harnessing a lost technology. But of course, this is only believed by people with an incredibly low IQ, right? Well, have you ever heard of this guy before? Nikola Tesla, the man responsible for 80% of the technology we use today, including x-ray, radar, laser and radio. Tesla believed that the Earth was a giant electrical generator and that we could use the planet with its poles to conduct wireless electricity. You probably thought that wireless electricity was a new technology, but all the way back in 1893 at the World's Fair, he shocked everyone by holding an isolated light bulb in his hand and he lit it naturally using the free electricity that runs through the earth. So take all of that into your mind, take a deep breath, because I'm going to introduce you to the plot twist of the century. Because of Nikola Tesla's work, this is why quite literally millions of people believe that the ancient pyramids are not tombs, but power plants emitting wireless technology. Hey, don't say I didn't warn you. I did say this was going to get controversial. But first, look carefully at this Egyptian ankh and then compare it to Tesla's oscillator. Now check out these ancient Egyptian carvings and notice what is it that this mysterious thing is holding. It looks like a wire and a bulb. But get this, in 1934, these three artifacts were found together in one of the pyramids. A ceramic pot, a tube of copper, a rod iron which contained a liquid acid, and all of these combined can be used to create a chemical reaction which produces 
electricity. Remember earlier how I told you that there was another theory for why there was water beneath the pyramids? Well, these same people who believe that these pyramids are energy sources, they believe that physio-electricity could be controlled by using the water from the Nile that runs beneath these pyramids. Look carefully at these sarcophaguses. These were clearly built into the pyramid as they were so large that you cannot move them. In fact, Egyptian ptologists, they believe that they were bull coffins. But those who believe this same theory say there's no way they were bull coffins. No, these are battery boxes. And in fact, in 2011, when a camera went inside one of these rooms, they found a large copper wire. And these same people claim that the hieroglyphics on the wall were showing some kind of wiring diagram. Whether you buy into these speculations or not, no one can deny that the genius Nikola Tesla was fascinated by the Great Pyramid and its potential to produce limitless energy. He even imitated the structure by building his own electromagnetic pyramid called the Warden Cliff Tower. This utilized the Earth's resonance, creating wireless energy. Tesla even said that he used it to wirelessly transmit pictures and sounds. But sadly, Tesla wasn't taken very seriously. And not only did many rip off his ideas, but in 1915, he ended up bankrupt with little reputation. And his transmitter tower was eventually destroyed by the authorities, who were very suspicious of its capabilities. You know exactly what I'm going to say next. Do you think that these pyramids were in fact power plants?